This video, I'm going to reveal to you the divine plan. By the end of this video, you'll know what that is. You'll know how to align with it and how it can powerfully change your life. Welcome back to another video. My name is Aaron and I help people expand their consciousness. Now in this video, I'm going to be sharing with you and revealing to you what is called the divine plan. Understanding who you really are, how you can let go of trying to control everything from the ego's perspective, and how doing this allows you to enjoy life in a way like you never have before, which of course is going to be enjoyable. And also at the same time, let things be easy for you. Let things be easy. That'd be fun and easy. How about that? I love that saying, fun and easy. Allow things to be fun and easy. And when you let things be fun and easy, you loosen up and you raise your vibration and then things are fun and easy. But when we have a resistance, when we are trying to control every little thing, every little compartment of how things should be, we create inner resistance. That inner resistance then within our energy field, as we look out into the world, we find more and more reasons to accentuate this inner resistance. Now, understand that we live in a holographic universe. Holographic universe. Things are holographic in nature. As above, so below. What we think of as solid matter is actually atoms at a very quick rate vibrating. And they look solid. However, from a different state of consciousness, you would see that everything is vibration. Now, in the reality that we live in, we forget who we are when we're born. We live in a simulation. So you could say, it's a, is it a simulation? Is it a hologram? It's both. <laughs> it's both. And when we look at this, what we could see is that we are eternal spiritual beings, live in temporary human experiences. And one of the reasons for that is similar to that of playing a video game. When you play a video game, if you knew the whole time that it was a game, you'd respond to it and you would treat it very differently than if when you came into it, you thought it was very real. We identify with our five senses and because we identify with our five senses and we identify with the ego avatar in this light in our body, what happens is we think this is who I am. This is who we are. When in actually we are much more than that. And our life and most of our life in the beginning is us figuring out that we are more than our avatar. We are more than just this physical ego structure. Normally in meditation, we start to figure this out. We start to also figure out that we are divinely guided. We got spirit guides. They chillin' right now. There's spirit guides around you. There's spirit guides around me. And that's a physical way of understanding it. It could also just be a connection that we all have because this physical reality is somewhat of an illusion. What if we're dreaming that this is who we are and in higher states of consciousness, we're asleep, kind of like in the movie, The Matrix. As if we were asleep projecting ourselves here, like our higher selves were asleep projecting ourselves here. And then we had spirit guides. Oh, little bird. Um, what was I talking about? <laughs> we have spirit guides that are around us in this higher state of consciousness. And they're giving us information. They're helping us through the process. But in our physical reality, we think of them as being around us as in physical reality. Maybe they are in physical reality, but physical reality is simply a reflection, a reflection that appears to be real. And that's why as we change on the inside, we also change the reflection that we get on the outside. But understand that most of our life, we think that the ego has to do everything. I know for me, for a long time, I identified as being lazy as a procrastinator. And because of that, I never actually, it took me years to start. It took me about six months to a year to actually even start making videos when I knew I was going to be making videos on YouTube. And that held me back from doing so because I identified with the, the ego avatar that I had of being lazy. Then what I did is I changed that and I started to take a lot of action. I said, you know what? I don't like this nine to five job. Take a lot, a lot, a lot of action. That's what I did. And then my ego got rewarded for taking a lot of action because then in came a lot of subscribers, people. And then I was like, oh, I don't have to work a nine to five job anymore. And I got rewarded for my work ethic. 
But then what can happen is sometimes the ego can get overly identified with it and think that it did everything. The ego wants the credit. And if we remain, if I were to remain in that ego, I would have things in my life manifest that would show me that would be hard because I'd be trying to control everything from the ego's perspective, but there'd also be things in my life that would show me, hey, don't identify so much with the ego. It's causing you pain and suffering. The source of suffering in our life is the ego trying to control every situation or trying to survive in its identity for who it thinks it is. That's the ego's job. The ego's job is to keep us to survive. Not only survive in the sense of do I have enough food, water, shelter, survive in the sense of its identity for the way it sees itself. If it, if it sees itself as able to, to do and be a one way as a certain type of person, it will do everything it can to remain consistent to that type of person that it sees itself as. So knowing that, what you can then become aware of is that we can bang around as the ego, but there's also this divine plan the divine plan is understanding that what, pe what, what we put out is what we get back. But understanding when we take it beyond the ego, we see that every single one of us are connected. And because every single one of us are connected, when you add value to other people, that goes out and that thing comes back to you. Because those other people are also other versions of you. You are a divine being dreaming that you are this human ego structure. So this is why when you look out into the world at almost any business that is successful, the businesses that are the most successful are the ones that add value, some type of value, some perceived value. And when you or some companies adding value, many other people benefit from that and they're willing to pay in the form of currency, in the form of money. Currency is energy. So what we can see is the way that our world works in a, is in a way, in the sense of value, the value system. Now, when you have a divine intention, which means you want to help out the larger system itself, the universe will reward you for that and it will support you with that. And right now on the planet, there is a shift in consciousness happening. We are moving from a third dimensional state of consciousness into a fourth and fifth dimensional state of consciousness. Which means we're moving from the ego identity of believing that we are these separate ego structures into understanding that we're all connected. We're moving from the ego's control, have to do everything, into this state of 4D level of consciousness where we can allow things to happen. It's more about vibrational resonance than it is about controlling and action. There's still action in 4 and 5D, but it's coming from a different place. The divine plan is that right now there is this shift in consciousness happening on the planet and you watching this video came here to be a part of this shift. Maybe even to somehow add value to it in some way. doesn't mean you have to start a YouTube channel. It could. It could just mean that you are transforming yourself from the inside out and that influences everyone that's around you. You see, when you help the system itself, and this is when you start to tap into that divine light energy, which is your natural state of being, by the way, but when you surrender to it, this is when magic begins to happen. So when I make da daily videos, you could say, well, Aaron is making a lot of, taking a lot of action to make these daily videos. All I do is I know that when I get in front of the camera, information is going to come through. And because I have this genuine intention of adding value, it comes through easier and easier every time I do it. And I've now done almost a thousand videos. So understand that this is the way it works. The more we are surrendering to this divine plan is the more we are in this higher vibrational state. And the more the information comes through, if I were to identify with the information coming through and be like, yes, Aaron is so amazing making these daily videos on YouTube. Everyone look at Aaron. He deserves so much credit. The information may not come the way it does because then I'd be chopping up the vibration. I'd be overly identifying with it. And most people overly identify with what they do, but when they do the things, they love for the sake of doing them. You'll know, you'll see that then they do very well. When you look at someone like PewDiePie who makes, who's a YouTuber, he loves what he does. He loves making videos. He doesn't do it just for the money, 
Most people that you see that are very successful at what they do, they do it because they love it and it puts them in that high state of being. Not because it gets them some type of money, because then that comes from an identity with the ego. And why does the ego want more money? You see, because it wants more of an emotion, wants more freedom, wants more security, wants more status. But when we see that what we can do instead is we could focus on that of understanding this divine plan. Source energy wants to flow through us. Imagine there's like this river, this river of source energy flowing. You can get into this boat of source energy and easily flow down this river. There you go, just flowing along, flowing along. And you can allow it to, keep, to take you where you wanna go and it could be you following your passion is that boat. What happens though is sometimes the ego will get in the way. And as you're in that boat, the ego will start getting the paddles and start trying to hit it in rocks, trying to stop, trying to go in a different direction, trying to go upstream, which is way more difficult. Trying to hold on to vines and tree branches, trying to paddle and, and, and out, out of that resistance, it's, the boat starts turning in weird directions and it becomes more highly probable that the boat could just flip over because there's so much resistance. So you see, go with your river by following your passion and understanding that your ego doesn't have to do everything. You can surrender and by surrendering, you allow this divine river to take you where you need to be. And the key is to surrender. So many times the mind will come in, but what about this? But what about this? Oh yes, oh yes, oh yes. It's, it's not about completely disintegrating the ego and never having the ego at all. It's about integrating the ego. Integrate the ego. Sometimes the answer is to take action because if our ego is not meeting the higher self halfway, then things won't actually be able to happen because action in this reality is the language of physical reality. If we don't take action, if we just remain there always thinking, we remain in that state. Now here's the thing as well. You are going down your river. There will be times that you will get synchronicities in your life and your higher self will guide you in different directions. If you trust that path, if you trust this, the process is much easier. If you resist things that happen, then a lot of times we bang around and it makes a lot more, makes the process much more difficult. So think of it like this. When you go to bed at night, you are awake at your higher self as your higher self or an aspect of your higher self. What you do is you look at different probabilities for the next day. But sometimes what will happen is certain things will happen and what your higher self may do is help guide you in a different direction. And if you're willing to surrender to it, it will then move you easier in that direction. And sometimes it could look like a hiccup. Maybe someone comes into your life and they're like, oh, why is this coming to mind? But then you look later on and you realize that it has a purpose. You see, this is the key to the process is surrender, understanding that the true ability of control you have is at a higher level of consciousness. And if you set the intention to connect to this higher self, you connect to this divine plan. The goal and the divine plan is to do something that is called reduce entropy. To lower entropy. Entropy is chaos. Entropy is separation. When we lower entropy, what we do is we feel connected to other people and it brings things more into unity. It brings things more into connection. And when we integrate the things that happen in our life, we then start to lower that entropy in our life. And we start to grow up in a spiritual sense. So the goal of the system itself is to lower entropy. So this is what I do. I understand that's the goal itself. So I do my best to put out value into the world that helps to lower entropy. What the universe does is the universe thing gives me more and more resources to do so since I'm using it to the benefit of the system itself, to the divine plan. The divine plan is to us to feel more integrated, to us to feel more love. And if we have something that happens to us, we give it a negative meaning, we get angry at someone else, well guess what? That increases entropy. And the goal of that is to learn how to lower that entropy and we do lower the entropy by forgiveness, forgiving ourselves, forgiving other people, by not feeling so separated from other people. 
You see, what we could begin to do is understand that the goal of this reality, of this divine plan, is to lower entropy and increase love, to lower chaos, increase love. If you are willing to put that good out into the world, it comes back to you exponentially because then the universe says, this person is doing more and more of this. Let's give them more resources. So this is something that I do and I use in my own life. And a lot of it has to do with surrender. When I'm making this video right now, I surrender. I'm not like, oh, is this part okay? Did I say this right? Did I say this wrong? I'm just making the video and allowing the information to come through. And I'm not overly identified with it. So understand that you are a divine being dreaming you are this little physical ego structure that experiences reality through the five senses. In this life, you came here to remember who you are and you came here to help the system lower entropy. Because there was a lot of chaos on the planet for a long time. And the only way we can change this planet's momentum is by doing it from the inside out, by incarnating into the system, forgetting who we are, because you actually exist at higher states of consciousness, and then remembering who we are so that we can then transform from the inside out and help other people here. That are people we know here, plus we probably know these people in the higher dimensions as well. Higher dimensions. We forget this every night when we go to bed. Or we forget this when we wake up in the morning, but every night when we go to bed, we remember aspects of this. So the divine plan is to lower entropy, to increase love, to surrender to your river, surrender to your passion, surrender to your purpose by doing so, the river will take you exactly where you need to be, when you need to be there. You don't have to, ego does not have to do everything, but the ego must do something. You must do what you love. It must be in the right state of being, in the right state of consciousness. You must work on yourself, raise your vibration, and this process becomes so much easier. So, something you will see below is something that I have that is coming called the shift experience. The shift experience is a digital program that will help you to shift to the reality you want plus shift your level of consciousness. It's unlike anything I have ever put out before. It is something that will be available within the second week of July, second or third week of July is when is going to be the official launch date. If you want to be the first to know about it, you can put your link in the description box below. Also, I'll be doing more live Q&As on Instagram. If you haven't followed me on Instagram yet, you'll see it right here. And um, you can ask me questions, plus I post twice a day there. So other than that, I hope you enjoyed this video. Feel free to like this video if you liked it. Subscribe if you haven't already. Hit the notification gear so you can see the daily vids that I do. Other than that, as always, peace, much love, and namaste.